In addition to considering the information associated with the M plus peak and the M plus one peak, it'll be important to look for the presence of an M plus two peak. This table shows some information about isotopes of elements that are commonly found in organic compounds. One of the messages in this table is to say that most elements have one dominant isotope. So for hydrogen, the dominant isotope is H1. For carbon, the dominant isotope is carbon-12. We've already seen, however, that carbon-13 can give us some important information in terms of the number of carbons in a molecule. You'll notice that there's a small correction in terms of the abundance of carbon-13 compared to your course pack, so if you would kindly change that. But chlorine and bromine are exceptions to the idea that there's one common isotope. So chlorine-35, the relative abundance is 100%, but chlorine-37 has almost a 33% relative abundance, a significant amount of a second isotope. For bromine, the two isotopes are of almost equal abundance. This will drastically affect the appearance of a mass spectrum and will be a telltale sign that these elements are present. And we'll look at some examples in a minute. I should mention, however, the example or the situation that occurs with oxygen. Oxygen-16 is the dominant isotope, and it occurs in relative abundance at 99.8%. Oxygen-18, so this is also two atomic units larger, occurs at 0.2%. Now that's still a small number, but sometimes if you suspect that there's an oxygen present, you might check to see if there's a little bump corresponding to an oxygen 18. But that's very insignificant compared to our chlorine 37 versus chlorine 35 or bromine 81 versus 79. I would now like to look at some mass spectra involving molecules that contain chlorine and bromine. So I've repeated the isotopic data for chlorine and bromine in the table and here are the corresponding mass spectrums. So we have chlorobenzene and we have bromobenzene. Initially, I show you these two spectrums side by side so you can look for some common patterns. You can see that there appears to be two molecular ion peaks. So, of course, this corresponds to the idea that you've got the molecular ion and then you've got the molecular ion plus two peak. The fact that in our first example here, you've got a molecular ion, in this case it's a base peak, set at 100%, and then the M plus two is about one-third abundance that is very indicative of having a chlorine in your molecule. Whereas in the next example, when you have apparently what appears to be like two molecular ions separated by two atomic mass units and they're of equal abundance, well, that's a telltale sign of having the bromine present. You can see that these two molecules are quite similar. They only differ in the fact that one has a chlorine, the other has a bromine. You can imagine that if the chlorine is lost or if the bromine is lost, you'll end up with a residual cation that would be detected that would be similar. And in fact, that's what we see right here. So I'm just going to label this guy right here as 77 atomic mass units and 77 atomic mass units. We'll do more proper analysis in a second. But those two peaks, in a sense, are identical in the sense that they're the residual cation after the chlorine's lost and after the bromine is lost. To do a proper analysis, though, I'd like to look at one spectrum at a time. So here's the mass spectrum for the chlorobenzene. Let's investigate a little bit more what the molecular ion peak and the M plus 2 peak actually represent. So this is going to remind you a little bit about the conventions in the representation. So here I draw most of the benzene ring, and then I'm going to add the chlorine. But in this case, you know, I'm assuming that essentially it's all carbon-12 and we've got hydrogen-1, but I need to specify specifically which chlorine isotope this is. And so, of course, this would be corresponding to chlorine-35. I need to put a bracket around this, put a positive charge, and then a dot. So this represents the radical cation. The reason why I put a bracket around this is at this stage, I'm not specifying exactly where the single electron is. 
In fact, it can be a bunch of different spots. And so this way I'm covering all my different possibilities. So that's for that particular peak. For the other peak that we have here, I'm going to draw something very similar and add the chlorine. But this time this will correspond to chlorine 37. Put the brackets around positive dot. Now I'd like to explain how the peak at around 77 atomic mass units has appeared. To do this it might be helpful to actually put some numbers into our mass spectrum. I'd like to remind you that the molecular formula for the compound that we have here is C6H5Cl. And I need to think about, well, what would be the mass for Cl35? And what would be the mass for Cl37? I can't use an average atomic mass here because mass spectrums do not measure directly average masses. They measure the mass of individual isotopes. So this would be 37. And in calculating the nominal mass, we would have six carbons. So that would be 72 atomic mass units, five hydrogens, five atomic mass units, plus the 35. And so therefore, this equals 112. In terms of chlorine 37, we'll have 72 plus 5 plus 37. And so of course, this will give us 114 atomic mass units. So the numbers that I see here in the mass spectrum, even though the resolution is not very good, of course, would correspond to the 112. And then over here, this is the 114 atomic mass units. I've already told you that this peak here corresponds to the 77. You might speculate, well, what happened to produce it? And starting from, for instance, the chlorobenzene that has the chlorine 35 isotope and moving backwards to explain this peak, what would be lost in this case would be a chlorine 35 and it would be lost as a radical. Of course, that's not being detected. What's being detected is what remains. Now, if we subtract 35 from 112, we end up, of course, with the mass of 77 atomic mass units. So this makes sense. What we're actually detecting, therefore, is the remaining benzene ring and all the hydrogens that are there, except at this spot here where we would have a carbocation. So it's important to indicate that. And of course, the only things that we detect are the carbocations. So that would explain how that peak came to be. But of course, it's also possible that this peak came to be, and indeed this would have happened, is instead of losing a chlorine 35, what was lost was a Cl.37. So both of these events would have resulted in that carbocation being detected at 77 atomic mass units. We can do a similar analysis with our bromobenzene. I'll start directly with the molecular formula. So that'll be C6H5Br. And of course, this will be Br79 initially. So then once again, 72 atomic mass units plus 5 atomic mass units plus 79. And this will give me a mass of 156 atomic mass units. The other mass would correspond to C6H5Br81. So once again, 72 plus 5 plus 81. And this would equal 158 atomic mass units. So the two peaks that we see here, one would essentially correspond to the molecular ion peak associated with carbon-12 and then the lower mass isotope of either the chlorine or the bromine, bromine in this case, and then the M plus 2 would correspond to the higher mass isotope. So I'll label the higher mass peak initially, and this of course would correspond to our benzene with the bromine, but this would be bromine 81. I put brackets around this, I put a plus, I put the radical single electron, so this is a cationic radical, and this would have a mass of 158 atomic mass units. 
The second peak here, which is, corresponds to our molecular ion peak, bromine 79, put brackets around it, positive charge, dot, and of course this corresponds to 156 atomic mass units. Again, consider how was this fragment generated, which happens to be our base peak at 77 atomic mass units, and I know now that clearly it corresponds to this carbocation starting from the molecular ion, that is the lower mass of these two peaks. We can say what was lost is a bromo-79. Of course, it'll be lost as a radical. So that is not directly detected, but we know that that happened because a 77 mass unit was detected. In a similar way, we can say from the higher mass peak, the M plus 2 peak, what would have been lost is a bromo radical, but of course this would correspond to the mass 81. I hope by doing this sort of example and these kinds of analysis, you're getting more familiar with looking at radical cations and how we represent them, especially the idea of if we don't know exactly where the cation is or where the radical is, we just put the positive charge and the dot outside of the bracket. I do want to point out that when we do an analysis of a mass spectrum, we don't necessarily try to explain all the different fragmentations and all the peaks. We mainly focus on the molecular ion peak, M plus 1, the M plus 2, and any very common sorts of fragmentation patterns. We have other techniques that we'll be looking at soon, including infrared spectroscopy and NMR spectroscopy, which can assist us in determining structure. So we take out certain important pieces of information and then we move on.